every situation. Come on. Oh, I count on my name. The same God that never fails. When I fail me now, you won't fail me now. In the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all the things out. You're working all the things out. Wasn't that great? Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have a star-studded program for you today. And uh, it's, it's, we're calling it Sports Day, all right? We've had two events this week that have put Liberty University in the main media stream. And you wouldn't believe the folks that have have come to learn what Liberty University is all about. Do you like Liberty University? Great, great. I'm going to introduce the first event that put us on the map uh, again this week. And then Pastor Jonathan, is he still here? He is. He, he's still here. All right, good. He's going to come and present the second event that happened. But I want to talk about the first event. Last Sunday, how many of you 
caught something on television last Sunday. Yeah. Well, in a few moments, I'm going to show you the last two laps of that. But we have with us today a man that's given a young man that's a student here at Liberty University the opportunity to become not only a champion for Christ, but a champion in his career field. I'm going to, would you help me welcome Mr. Rick Hendricks as he comes out here to help us today. Let's get right here. He's the man that's given one of our students the opportunity to be a champion in his field. He is really Mr. NASCAR. How long have you been in the NASCAR business? About 35 years. 35 years. Can you believe that? I think it's four cars that you run. That's right. Yep. Four cars. And I'll tell you what, they've had a very successful record. So successful, I don't remember it all, but I've heard it. I want you to share with these students about what is happening with uh, the uh, Hendrix Motorsports. Well, we are the all-time uh, leader in championships with 14, and we've won uh, 283 races. That's an all-time all -time record. So, yes, it is. Uh, yes. And tell the students a little bit about uh, your other activities, their potential to become involved, not only in motorsports, but uh, you have some other businesses. Yeah. I'm in the automobile business. I'm the largest privately held dealer in the U.S. And uh, we have a lot of Liberty students that intern with us in marketing and business. And uh, I know you remember a guy, uh, Brandon Napalm, that played football here. He's a partner and runs one of the largest uh, Mazda deals in the country now. So we are, we love the Liberty students, Christ-based ed education and great foundation in business. So any, everybody here today, you can, you can pick the job you want when you get out of school here because we just, everybody needs students like Liberty students and we sure will take all we can get. All right, that means some of you are going to get a job. Be nice to this guy right here, right? Let's give him another big hand today. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Now, I want to show you a video of the last two laps of the race in Atlanta uh, last Sunday. Now, here's what I want you to do. Will you help me? Yes or no? Will you help me? All right. I want you to pretend that you're watching it live. And if you were there, what would you do? Would you be hollering? Would you be clapping? Would you be standing up and all of that? When we show this video, I want you to act like it's real. And I want you to pull for car number 24, which is the Liberty car and uh, the driver of it that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. Let's have the video. There it is. Oh, oh Ross Chastain. That might have been William Byron's best friend. And that sends Blaney backwards as Chastain comes up to 30. Oh, here we go. Second. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One. That's exactly he wants what William Byron side. wants. Side by side behind him. Oh, oh. From Ross and Blaney. Blaney into the wall with Frisco. Here comes a run. The one of Ross Chastain. You're going to have to block. Oh, below the white line there by Christopher Bell. They're racing side by side. Perfect scenario for William Byron. There's going to be a massive run coming off this one car four. Byron top to bottom. Hugs that white line. Drifts up and comes to the line. He wins it as Pusher, Haley have a hard crash into the wall. What a race. Great job by William Byron. His spotter, the communication. When it the goes patience. Back but Charlotte, North Carolina's William Byron has scored his third career win in his 149th NASCAR Cup Series start. Wasn't that a great finish? I've been hearing from the commentators that that was one of the best finishes they've had in NASCAR racing, one of the best. Now, there was a young fella driving that car. 
He's a student here at Liberty University. Let's welcome William Byron today as he comes here on the platform. Where is he? Thanks for Appreciate here, it. Everybody. Thanks for having me. I'll give you chills. <laughs> so cool. Can you believe he was behind that wheel? When I first met him, I said, man, he's awful young. <laughs> he's awful young. But uh, Mr. H is who's so fondly referred to, Mr. Hendricks, and we refer to him fondly, Mr. H. Let me tell you. He's given a lot of Liberty students the chance to not only be a champion for Christ, but to be a champion in their field. And he's given William here the opportunity to be a champion in race car driving. How long have you been racing? For uh, 10 years of my life. So since I was 13 years old, I'm, well, 14 years old, I'm 24 now. So it's been a, it's been a crazy journey, but like you said, I'm thankful for, you know, Mr. Hendrick's support, for Liberty University, all the all the great supporters we have. It, Sunday was definitely one of the coolest wins I've had. So third and, win of my career. And you've won how many? Three, three wins in the Cup Series, which is, which is uh, pretty cool. <laughs> All right. What would you like to share with these students today? Oh, I just, uh, I love the atmosphere here. I was able to, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm taking classes online now on uh, Liberty University Online Academy. And, and I got a chance to be here for a year on campus when I was a freshman and it's just so cool to see the energy around this place and getting to see Malik and, and what he's doing and his pro day and a lot of excitement around Liberty. We've actually got a gift for you as well. So oh. got something from, from Sunday's race, a little <laughs> memorabilia. So we've got a picture here from uh, the burnout at Atlanta and shows off the Liberty colors, the flames. So pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I can put it down. <laughs> and I'll pick it up as we leave today. Awesome. Do these students have a chance to maybe get involved in NASCAR or to get involved with Mr. Hendricks? He's got a lot of openings and pl places for employees. He does. Would he be a good guy to work for? He would. I mean, we've, won, uh, we've won three out of the five races this year in the Cup Series, which is, I think, never happened since 1968. So... Um, you know, won the championship last year with Kyle Larson, my teammate, and uh, we, we love some engineers and, some, and anybody who's mechanically inclined, so it's a, it's a great place. All right. Let's, uh, you've got some special folks here. I do. I Would do. you my, introduce them? So my parents, my, they're over here somewhere. We're oh, yeah, there they are. There. So, so they, uh, my mom, she... Uh, She's great. She, she, uh, she actually had cancer last year, and we're really thankful that she's here and uh, you know, fully recovered from a brain tumor. So Amen. pretty awesome. So that was just definitely blessed to just have you know, good health and good support from my parents. It's, it's good to have you know, such supportive parents when I was younger and uh, kind of gave me the freedom to go race cars, which wasn't the safest thing, but it made it work. <laughs> it made it work. She allowed you to do it. I'm sure you cringe every time you see uh, a collision out there. Well, <laughs> stay with me here just for a moment, William. I asked uh, Mr. H to uh, uh, give me a shirt. And I said, if you'll give me one of your shirts, I'll wear it. Now, when you tell somebody you're going to do something, you ought to do it, right? Okay, there it is. <laughs> All right, let's give him another big hand. Thank you, guys. William and Mr. H, Appreciate would it. you please? Thanks, Thank you, honey. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Jonathan, where's Jonathan? He's going to come up and introduce. He had to speak someplace that I convinced him not to. Introduce this next special event. Well, we've got an exciting day today, obviously, being able to celebrate with William. But also we have the opportunity of celebrating with another young champion who's going to go out and he's going to change NFL. And that's our own Malik Willis that we're going to have the opportunity of, of celebrating today. But we also have a number of other guests, including who's going to be our host for today, and that's Sam Ponder from ESPN Game Day. And in case you did not know, she also is a Liberty graduate. But before we go into that, why don't you watch this video?
life and death is a lot more important than winning or losing. I felt like when I coached a young man, I had to be sure that he was the best athlete possible. I had to be sure he graduated from college, and I wanted him to know about Jesus. Since I've been back, and it is always so much fun to be in Convo, the enthusiasm and the passion in this room is something I miss. I'm still a little bit jealous of you guys. Enjoy it while it lasts. But today we're here for a very special reason, that is to celebrate the guy you guys all know and love. But this joins together uh, a few things in my life that I love. One, of course, is football. Another one is the legacy of one Bobby Bowden and his two sons, Tommy and Terry, are here with us today. Um, I was telling you guys before, my oldest is seven and I named her after Coach Bowden and it's really kind of strange to name a seven year or a child after a football coach when you have a little baby girl, but the reason I did that was not because of all of the wins and the success that your dad had. It was because of the way he treated people, and I know a lot of this award that we're here to celebrate today is about that, the whole athlete, and celebrating guys that excel both on and off the field. So, Tommy, I'll start with you. We had a a uh, difficult year in your family this year, losing your dad, and I was fortunate enough with Christian to go down to the celebration of his life in Tallahassee, and what struck me when I was there is that everyone who got up and spoke really didn't talk much about football. They talked about the legacy and what difference he made in their lives off of the field. So what lasting impact do you think your dad would have wanted to have? Well, I think one of the things is if you watch the services that they have from my father when he passed away, is when ex-players got up and talked, they talked about the things that you just mentioned, more character, his relationship with Christ, being a godly father, being a godly coach, being a godly man, being a godly person. So I think that's the legacy. That will be the legacy uh, that he left. He'd, he'd be so proud of this environment, uh, being a Christian man at a, at a Christian school. Uh, I would say he'd be rolling over in his grave, but he's a Christian, so he he's, wouldn't be rolling over his grave, but he'd be happy with the reception that Liberty has put on for him. Terry, for you, you're still coaching out there, doing what you grew up seeing your dad do. How important is it to you to carry on that legacy of focusing on the whole athlete and not just the athlete? Well, I think that was so much a part of my father's life of looking at the inside of an athlete and into his spirit and to his soul and what were the important things in his life. And he always used to say that we can make football a priority of our life, but don't ever make it the priority of your life. It's not the priority. Jesus Christ is the priority of your life. And you can't take trophies or plaques or awards with you. Uh, but your children and those you love, if you share the gospel, you can take them with you. Yeah, yeah that's his legacy is the, the people and the um, eternal effect that he had. And we see that obviously in all his children. I also see that in the guy I chose to marry who I wasn't, around, I wasn't really in the picture yet. I was here actually when, when you were playing for Coach Bowden. Um, tell me what it was like to play for a legend. Yeah, I fortunately I had the opportunity. I was a, a legacy player, so my dad played for Coach Bowden as well. And I literally owe him my life. I wouldn't be alive because my dad met my mom at Florida State. And, and my dad only went to Florida State because Coach Bowden offered him a, a scholarship to go play football there. And, and so I literally owe him my life. And, uh, and what I love about Coach Bowden, two things that stuck out in my mind as, as I reflected on, on him as a coach and, and my time as a player. Uh, number one, football was 
not his purpose, right? It was only the medium through which his purpose manifested itself. And uh, so his purpose was every player that came through that locker room, he was going to tell, he was going to share his faith. And it was an amazing thing to see. He was a father figure to so many players that walked through those doors. And the second was, and I think, Tommy, you brought this up at, at, his, at his funeral in Tallahassee. You described him as a simple man. I described him as a man of fundamentals. So every game, every pregame speech, it was always about blocking and tackling. What was going to win the game was blocking and tackling and low man wins, right? And I think that's such a metaphor to our faith, too, because I think we, as we th read through Romans, as we think about predestination and all these complicated aspects of our faith, let's think about the fundamentals, right? Like, that was... Thinking about the fundamentals and what, what did Jesus say the fundamentals are? Loving God and loving our neighbor. And I, and I love that about Coach Bowden. It was about the fundamentals, whether it was in football or whether it was in life. Yeah, he kept the main thing, the main thing. And anybody who spent time around him uh, would tell you that. He had a lot of super fans. One in particular was a guy south of here. I don't know how y'all feel about this guy. I was a big fan, got to cover him when he won some national championships down in South Carolina, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. We're going to hear from Dabo Sweeney. Take a look. Man, what a blessing it was to know Coach Bowden. Got a chance to meet him through Tommy. Even after I, after I met him, it was just awesome to see that he was even better than what I had ever imagined. But Bobby Bowden ran the race to win. He ran it with endurance. Billy Graham says a coach influences more in a year than most do in a lifetime. He was the epitome of that statement. Uh, his purpose, I believe, was to know him and make him known. And he did all he could uh, to prepare his players for the two most important days in life. And that's today and that day. He won some games along the way, but what I love about Bobby Bowden is he never forgot his purpose. I think you choose a career, you're called to coach, and I know there's a lot of young people's lives who've been changed because of the influence of Bobby Bowden, and I'm one of them. Yeah, it's not just the players that he impacted, it's the coaches across the league. A lot of them that didn't actually get to spend that much time with him, but you've got a special one here who did get to know Coach Bowden. Hugh, what was your interaction with Coach like? Well, he was the, uh, the first coach that I remember that said, you know what, I'm going to coach at the highest level, but faith. And he was one that would go and preach and and talk, and, and I said, man, that is so attractive to me, and so I really want to meet this guy. And so I'm a high school coach, 24 years old. I get my first head job in a high school, and but I had this mentor named Ken Smith who had worked for Coach Bowden for years, and I said, man, I really want to go meet Coach Bowden, and go to, I'll go to this clinic. I drove down to Tallahassee, and, uh, man, he, you know, he's got everybody in the world to spend time with. But he made time for me and actually let me come in his office. Maybe it was the relationship with Ken Smith. or, And, uh, and we had a great conversation that day. I told him of my dreams, desires, and he was just so adamant, man, that's great, but that's not your purpose. That's just, that's, that, that's just the avenue to your purpose. Don't forget your purpose. And I've, that's always stuck with me. Well, fast forward years later. Um, I've chased that, that dream and have been named the head coach at Ole Miss, and we had kind of stayed in touch through Ken some, but uh, we were really big into FCA, and I said, uh, Coach Bowden, would you please come speak, you know, for our yearly fundraiser for FCA? He accepted, came and spent the day with us. He came in my office, and I said, Coach, we're having some success here and, and all that, but what's the one thing that you would, that you would tell me that um, – if there's one thing you would tell me that, uh, that you would just abide by every single day, and he said to me, if you are walking with God, always trust your gut. And he made time for me. And so I've tried to do that with others, but I've also tried to abide by that when I know I'm walking with God, man, the Holy Spirit in my gut is usually right. And that really leads me to... Malik Willis, because um, truthfully, when we decided uh, whether or not to recruit Malik, I knew I loved him as a kid, loved his family, uh, but truthfully at that time had really no idea, is this guy really going to be a great quarterback? Because <laughs> um, 
I knew he had the athletic ability, but really the, the opportunities that he had had were very, very minimal. And so you're like, man, I don't know if he only had 15 snaps and only threw two passes in games. And, you know, so you're, you're going through that. And then we brought them on an official visit and um, got to spend time. He's still with, mad about that. <laughs> I, I got to spend time with uh, his father, Harold, and, and him. And I just fell in love with the person. And the only thing he wanted to do on his official visit was talk about ball and faith and how we could help him in both here at Liberty. And, man, I took Coach Bowden's advice and said, man, I'm going with my gut on this one. I think this cat can play, and I think he can win. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea we'd be sitting here today uh, getting ready to award him with – I received the Bobby Bowden Coach of the Year AFC Award after our 2015 season, and, and to me it's the most special one in my, in my library at home. And now to have a player that's getting ready to receive that, but really the way he's modeled – treating people like coach Bowden did is really the thing I'm most pleased with with Malik yeah that's what stuck out to me with what you just said is that coach made time for you when you were a high school coach and I got the chance to be around him um, actually before I was married to Christian and I was just a scrub reporter and he spent time with me getting nothing in return. And I think he did that for a lot of people. He made time for people. And I haven't gotten to spend much time with your QB1 here yet. But here's what I've seen from a distance, over and over, whether it's been at the Combine, helping people out on the street, your relationship with sweet Erin Hope, I don't know if she's here today, or just hearing from other people. You know, part of my job as a reporter, I gotta try and dig some stuff up. I can't find anything on this guy because of the way he treats the people who don't necessarily have a whole lot other than love to offer him. And I see that connection between Coach Bowden and you. So I know everyone in here is like, will you guys please stop talking and let the man talk who is the reason why we came here. Malik, when Coach said that you wanted to spend time talking about ball and faith and how Liberty could help you in both, the first one's obvious. We've seen how this combination between you two has worked out on the field. It's worked out pretty well, but how has being at Liberty impacted your faith journey? Ooh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely just like, I mean, the biggest thing at the end of the day, football, it only lasts so long. So you got to realize, like, none of us are perfect, but uh, just that striving to be better. You know what I mean? It's just not like you trying to do the same things over and over and over. Just try to be a little bit better. Try to do something you know, good. I mean, doing good things make me feel good, so that's why I do them. Uh, and that's just what we're supposed to do. There's no reason not to. Uh, like, the lady at the uh, combine, I mean, I didn't have any money, so I just kind of like, I had just got a new suitcase from Nike. I went to the Nike suite, and I was like, I mean, I got some shirts and stuff and a jacket, but I was like, I mean, I don't have any money, but you can do something. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, nobody's better than anybody, no matter what position they're in, so it's all just paying attention to people at the end of the day and just showing the love that you get from your parents or you get from your, you know, whoever take care of you or your family, your friends, just whatever love you get. Like, a lot of people don't get that, so you just try to give it to other people. Where does that come from? Did you grow up like that? Is that something that's developed over the years as you've matured and been in different environments? Or where does that side of you, that desire to give back, especially in a culture where all the focus is how much can I get and how much can I show and how can I show that I'm special and different? Where does that side of you come from? Probably my parents over there, but uh, definitely dad. just uh, realizing that we all works in progress and Money ain't really too much, nothing but imaginary. I mean, all I need is my game. Y'all boys here, yeah, add me on Xbox or PS5. <laughs> I mean, I don't really do much. I be chilling. So, I mean, you don't need much. And when, and when you have a grateful heart, it just makes it easier. Mm. I mean, we wake up every day and we overlook that a lot of times and let stuff ruin our day. Like, mm. it's just so much bigger than that. 
Yeah, you, you brought up the money thing, and I know, and, and Christian had this experience leading up to the draft, all the excitement and the, the pressure and the focus and a bunch of stuff like this that you have to do when you know your life is about to dramatically change. You've gone through changes before growing up in Atlanta and then going to Auburn and then switching to come here, but this is a, this is a drastic change that you're headed into right now. How do you hang on to that core of who you are, the things that you're being celebrated for t today for this award. How do you hang on to that when there's gonna be all the money, all the pressure, all the temptation, and all the, I'm not trying to scare you, sorry, that sounded bad, <laughs> that sounded bad. But how do you hang on to who you really are? You just keep looking up, and don't look out front of you, I mean, and just try to chill. If Sam, the one thing I'll say about him is, he throws 400 yards, scores six touchdowns in a game, and the press conference is, you know, our receivers, our D-line, our O-line, our coaches call good plays, and then he didn't have his best game, or he did have a good game and we lost. Well, it was, you know, I just didn't get it done. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, he, he owned all of that, but Every single time, win, lose, or not, go follow his social media accounts or whatever. It is, I thank God for everything, everything. And, and he lives by that. Yeah, I could see that. Christian, yesterday at your pro day, was like, how much is he throwing? You know, trying to figure out what, what he was getting into. And uh, coach or somebody said, he's going to throw 70 times. And Christian's like, 70 times? Why is he throwing so much? And coach told me something I will never forget this about you. He said that you had so many teammates and receivers who were out there and you wanted to get all those guys some shine. So it didn't matter if your arm was going to be a little extra tired, maybe throwing more than a normal quarterback would do, that you were doing that to give your teammates some love. And we talk about the legacy of Coach Bowden. That's the type of legacy, I think, that makes a real impact. Well, guys, I know before we hand out the hardware here, like I just said, he's headed into this next season of life that obviously brings its challenges. You guys have all experienced this in different ways around different people. Do you have any encouragement for Malik as he heads into this next season of life, if you will? Yeah, uh, well, after you put all the pressure on him. Sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> look, it's, as you know, your life's about to change and I hope you're excited because it's awesome. And especially you're, what, a month <clears throat> removed from from the NFL draft and potentially a first round draft pick. Enjoy it, first of all. Um, and then it's like, don't forget your why, you know, as, as we talk about Coach Bowden and that legacy and from the things that you've already said, you know, when you make football your purpose, those, those wins are great, but those losses are so hard and you're on an emotional roller coaster because it is, you know, when you are, are operating from football being your purpose, but when you make that a priority, but not the priority, it makes it so much better, right? And then you see those opportunities to help others and, and you enjoy it and, and the fruits of your labor. And, but just have fun, because it's, it's awesome. You know, Malik, you said one thing which gave me an indication that you're gonna do pretty well <laughs> in the NFL. You said, don't, don't look uh, out, look up. And uh, you've uh, made some difficult decisions. Transferring is a huge decision at your age and uh, the trials and tribulations and difficulties of college football. Uh, and the fact that you know how to stay grounded, uh, how to stay level, how to have stability in your life through that relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, uh, you've acknowledged it. You're going to do well. We're, Bowdens are very honored that you're the recipient and could not have picked a better uh, winner. There's one of them, and you're in a, uh, you're in a great uh, company and, and, and class of, of past winners. So uh, thank you, but uh, you seem to be heading in the right direction. <laughs> You know, I was thinking of one thing. I'm not sure if it was Sam or you or Christian that were saying, the one thing my father never got too big to do was that was turn and sign an autograph or turn and recognize a little child or someone that wanted to see him. And it's really a pet peeve of mine. I know you're not going to do it. No matter how far you go or how big you get, never get too big to turn and say thank you to someone who looks up to you to someone who tries to emulate you and want to be like you, it doesn't take much to give an autograph or to just pat them on the head or throw them your chin strap. 
And as you go on and on, if God gives you, and he will bless you if you bless him, to always give back in a kind way uh, to each of those fans that are out there. Because all of us will tell you, they won't always be out there. There'll be a time when you don't have that opportunity. And so don't ever forget to be that person that thanks and gives to those uh, who, who they follow every move that you make. And it's important to them. Yeah, one, one quick thing. So it's, uh, for you to have success you've had, there's obviously a lot of people that have to be involved. You mentioned your parents, coaches, this and that. But uh, I do know this. Terry and I have been involved in the coaching profession for a long time. My father, uh, Liberty University, has a Bobby Bowden in uh, Coach Freeze. So you ought to be very fortunate. I know he's been a big reason for your success. But uh, we're familiar with his background. And uh, you're very fortunate to have him as a piece of this puzzle in your success. So, again, we say thank you. For sure, so many special people here. We're up here talking about the award. You've gotten a picture of what Coach Bowden was like. You obviously know your guy here. It is time to hand out some hardware. So let's check out how we got to this place. Now, 60 years later, I can look back and see exactly how God put my life together. But at the same time, I mean, all glory goes to God. You know, I, I can't, I can't describe, describe what He's done for me and my family. You know. Representing my father and all of our family um, in, our, in, in presenting you this Bobby Bowden Award. Um, I think because we played y'all. I was at ULM and, and I had to watch a lot of video of you. And I say this with all great respect. You can't watch the film without uh, having what most of us coaches to have a great quarterback. He has to have poise under pressure. I've never seen a, a quarterback that is more calm uh, and, and calm and soothing to his team than you are. You always have a poise under pressure. Now that I know you, it makes me think of the, uh, a peace that surpasses all understanding, that you have a peace that comes from knowing that you're doing the will of God and he is in control of all things. And that's where I see you play. But when I think about my father as a leader, as a coach leader, a coach and a quarterback are very similar. They've got to be leaders. A leader coach, a leader quarterback has to be one that gets people to follow, gets linemen to block for you, gets guys to catch for you. But I think what made my father different, and I think what made you different, especially since I've listened to you, it's not your leader quarterback, your leader coach, you're a servant quarterback. And he was a servant coach. And I think you understand that your purpose is not to dag them, get people always just to follow you, but to serve them, to, pat, to thank those linemen, to thank those receivers, to appreciate and give to others. And so I, I think what makes you so much uh, a great recipient of this award is because you're not just a leader quarterback like it, he was a leader coach, but he is a servant quarterback and a servant young man. And with that, I want to thank you and appreciate you and proudly offer you this award as the night 222. 221 Bobby Bowden, recipient of the Bobby Bowden Award. This is, this is, uh, it's just more than an honor. I'm more than blessed to receive this, and I can't do anything but give the glory to God and the glory to my parents and Liberty University for having me. That's tough. Oh, okay. 
Y'all join me as we, uh, we pray over Malik and his, uh, his, his future. Father, we thank you so much today that your name has been honored by the uh, Bowden family, by Terry and Tommy and um, Christian and Sam and those that knew him well. And uh, Lord, he, uh, I, I know that uh, you welcomed him with good and faithful servant as your words. And um, Lord, may we just strive in our professions as coaches, as Malik enters into a big realm of, of football as we try to be uh, faithful followers in this world with um, being a part of this football industry. Lord, I pray that you just protect Malik. I pray you give him great health, that you give him sound wisdom, that you put around him um, godly people that have his best interests at heart, uh, that, that draw him closer to you. That would be my prayer, Father. And we thank you for the time we've spent with him. We thank you for Liberty University and what it's poured into Malik. And may he be a shining light. And may the light that shines on him never be greater than the light that's in him. In Christ's name, amen. Congratulations. Let's thank them all for being here today. Would you please give them another big hand? Thank you for being here. Great, great. Malik, congratulations. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Let's give them another big hand, Coach. You put all this together. We appreciate it, buddy. Thank you very much. Now, how many of you go out into Lynchburg every once in a while? I mean, you get off of the hill here and you go into the city some. Raise your hand. All right. I want you to be good when you're there because we have the city manager with us today and we want to get along with the city real well. And so I'd like, uh, we call him Mr. Winner. Where is he? Where is he? Stand up. Where is he? Right over here. Let's give him a big hand. The city manager of Lynchburg. <laughs> These students are going to try to represent Lynchburg uh, the best they can. You, you all are on good behavior all the time, so I know you'll do well. Uh, we appreciate him coming. Now, Mr. H and, uh, and William today brought some shirts, brought some hats. You folks come and give them out, and uh, they're going to be giving these out, and you're dismissed right now. <laughs>